We have now our whole project, so it's time to take that into production and use that to analyze the data and serve that data to our stakeholders. So if we remember what we learned about DVD at the very beginning, I said that I was going to introduce all these layers to our development. And we saw already how we were able to do that development, the testing and the documentation, all of this happened in our development environment. And now, if we want to take that into production, we're going to go through a process that it's called deployment. What we're going to do is we're going to take all that code and we're going to open something like a pull request and we're going to, at the end, merge the code into the main branch. That is going to affect our production environment. In our production environment, we're going to be running the models, but there are also going to be some differences. For example, we saw how by default during the development, uh, we want to have uh, limited the data, something in production we won't have, right? In production, we want to make sure we have all of the data. We don't have any limits, uh, but it's also very likely in a real life scenario under production as well, not everyone will have the same accesses. Not everyone will be able to write and read all of that data. This is very likely to going to be in a different database or at least a different schema with a different sets of rights. So this deployment workflow, what it would look like is I will do my development in a custom branch, in my development branch. All of us, everyone in our team will be doing that in their development branch. Well, at the same time, right, in parallel, production keeps using the main branch, doesn't really know what's happening in all of these development branches. Once one of those development branches is ready to uh, go to production, we open this pull request. Ideally, someone will check that that's correct, but we're also going to see a way to automate that. And once that's ready to be merged, it goes into the main branch and we're going to run those models in production. And we're going to see as well how we're going to schedule the running of those models because we want to make sure that that runs usually on a nightly, on a daily, hourly, bi-hourly basis to keep our data up to date. So we're first going to do how we're going to run those projects in production. I I'm going to go here under environments. We have our development environment that we've been using so far, but we'll create a new one that's called production. It tells me that it's a deployment. It goes under prod. Um, let's just put a prod data set and let's save this. That's it. Now we're ready to create our first shop. We're going to create a deploy Job that's going to let's say called nightly. This is where the data hits uh, production under our environment production, and we see here that it comes already with a DBT build by default, but we can change that, right? So um, this is a scheduler really where we can create all this DBT shops. We can run all our DBT commands, a single shop can run multiple of those commands. We can have multiple steps. We can have many times that DBT build, but we can also separate those DBT test, DBT set, seed, um, DBT uh, source freshness if we wanted to. Each of those runs, we'll be able to, to trigger manually uh, on a schedule basis, something like a cron schedule, or trigger via an API. And whenever this is running, it's going to generate a lot of metadata that we'll be able to use afterwards. So most likely when we're working for a company in a real data team, we'll be able to use that data to both monitor and alert our data platform. So we see here, uh, let's go here, let's do a complete DVT build. Let's try to run the docs because we want to make sure we generate those docs in production. Uh, that will be the real documentation that everyone is going to use. We can run our source freshness and we can here set run this on a schedule. And let's say we do every time at 
12 every day. Probably not on Saturday. We don't receive data on Saturday and Sunday. Um, there are some advanced settings, like you could do times out, timeout, threats, how many models do you want to run in parallel. Let's save this. As I said as well, we can also run this um, on ad hoc basis. So I already merged some of the code that we've been working on uh, to make sure that we had some stuff to run in here. And this trigger already some run. In the meantime, I'll show you the third uh, way of triggering this, which is via an API. So this gives you all of the things that you need to trigger this via an API. So this can be very helpful. For example, you've set up um, Airflow or Prefect or Mage for the previous um, weeks. And you could do a, a pipeline that is loading the data, that it's retrieving the fresh data, and it's loading it into your BigQuery, and then it's triggering the DVT run, for example. Let's go to, to this. This is probably almost done. And let's see what we can see in here. We see how was it triggered. We see the commit shell. This is quite nice because this allows us to see exactly what had changed in the repository at that moment in time of the run. Um, we see how long it's running. In this case, it will be updated when it's finished. And we're going to see that every one of this has some steps additional to what we added. It clones the repository to make sure that it always has the latest in the main branch. It creates that connection to, in this case, BigQuery, but your data platform. It runs DVT depths. Remember, this installed the packages. It runs the source freshness because we added that. We didn't have any fresh, uh, any sources actually to, to check. It goes to the DVT build. And we are very familiar with this by now. We can also move around with here. See the warning that we saw from before. And at the very end, it generated the docs. And what we can see as well is under the artifacts, we have also the catalog that JSON and other JSON files that have all of the metadata that we need uh, if we want to analyze that or host the docs on our own. So if we go back here, we're going to have some information as well. And we see as well that we have that documentation and those sources. But we want to make sure that we have this hosted here as well. So what we can do is I'll go for an explore. I'll just go to settings. And under artifacts, I define which job I want to take the documentation from. Uh, yes, saved. And now if I click here for the documentation, I can always find the documentation of my whole project in production. This is very helpful when you're working in a team and then you can expose this. Uh, but also we'll have data sources here that come all this information that come from that run that we had. And there's another thing that I mentioned that we could do. And you may have noticed that when I did this, I have here create shop and it tells me to create a continuous integration shop. So what is that? When we are doing those pull requests, I said that we want to make sure that we automate as much as possible. So there's a good software um, practice, software engineering practice that's called CI CD, usually comes together. CI stands continuous integration, and CD means continuous deployment. And this is the practice of regularly merge those code, those branches into uh, main. We want to make sure that we don't uh, hold all of the changes like we did and put all of them in there at once. And we automate those builds and those tests and those runs. So we make sure that it's automated, the fact that it's not going to break production. The goal here is exactly that, to reduce things to go emerge into production and break that. This is something that we can easily do with DT Cloud. So if I were to go here, let's create this. CI so yeah, checks, avoid breaking production, trigger by pull request. Notice that what this will do as well, it will create a schema 
call DVT Cloud PR, the name of our PR, it will run this and it will be dropped after the pull request is closed. So this way we don't affect production, we don't affect development. It comes by default with this command that we're going to use. So run anything that has been modified and its children. We could, of course, add our own. So wouldn't it be nice you run things like DVD test um, and you create a test that make sure that fails if your models are not documented, for example. Or um, you could add to run the test, for example, only and not just the building. We are going to compare everything against production in order to identify what has been modified. And um, yeah, we're ready again here and there advanced. We can define how many threats if there is a timeout and we can save this. Um, there's another thing that we need to do here uh, under the pull request. We're going to open a pull request and then it's going to take the CI. This usually takes a little bit to impact, so we're going to take that time to make a change. There are something under factories that I identified that it's wrong. So we're going to use this opportunity. So here it says pick up location and pick up location twice. And this should actually have been drop off location. So let's fix that. Let's commit. And let's open that pull request. Create fixed location. And that's it. And it should, there it goes. So because DVT was already linked to this repository because it was linked to my project, it already knows, and this is triggering that run. And what this is going to do is, as I said, it's going to change to compare to this nightly. It's going to identify whatever change in our case, sorry, let's go back to pull request. In our case is the, um, is the fact trips and some smaller identity like description here. So it's going to run fact trips and its children, which is the data mart that we had. And only when that fix, then I'm able to run the pull to close the pull request. So you can imagine that this uh, builds a lot of trust, but also um, makes our shop much easier. So everything went fine. So it should be able, there it goes, to see the successful check. So this is everything that we needed to do to transform that data correctly.